the downfall of Final Fantasy 14. This has been a video that has come out. A lot of people have been very opinionated about this and very angry. Who made this? An individual named Lynx Camelli. Hello everyone, I was Lynx Camelli. For the first time in recorded history- Damn, bro, he just deletes his character. Final Fantasy XIV is currently going through a bit of a rocky period. Ooh. Although I no longer play the game, I loved FF XIV oh, like no one. other game I had ever played. I've put in over 12,000 hours Alexander in the six five, years that I played, man. and I've seen the game transform over time from a highly six. creative niche substitute for World of Warcraft to an unrecognizable mess of <laughs> oversimplification and lack of creativity. Damn. The opinions and ideas I will present in this video are feelings I have had for a very long time, Jesus. much before I stopped playing the game, but I never felt comfortable sharing these 12, feelings because hours. FF14 has a critical issue. You, or more appropriately, the FF14 community. Jeez. It's no secret that a large amount of 14 players are die-hard lovers that will not accept any criticism or negativity towards their perfect game. Whenever someone brings up a uh -oh. problem they have with the There's game, Zeno. they have to keep adding disclaimers that everything is fine out of fear of invoking the wrath of the FF yep. lovers. This is such a waste of potential because this dungeon could probably be badass, but instead they're going to make it brain dead easy to cater to casuals. And that's fine. That's, that's fine. A vast majority of their content is so that anybody can do it. And while that's good, yeah. and I'm not saying that they should take it away, they need to add some stuff that is a little harder that not everybody can do it. I'm not saying they need to like, I'm not saying they need to. However, community sentiment seems to be declining for the first time in ever. I mean, Zeppla, FF14's beacon of positivity and happiness. Uh oh, uh oh, is this gonna be about her going to Genshin Impact? released a 36 minute video Jesus. going over all of her issues with FF14's current expansion and larger core oh, issues with the game as a whole. Man. Now, this was surprising. I mean, that's like a WoW player saying World of Warcraft is actually a good game. Like that is beyond controversial. Yeah, you don't, you and don't yet it seemed to go over well with a large amount of wow. people agreeing and seeing through the Yoshi P indoctrination. Chris, well, I you have to keep in mind that there were a lot of people who were angry at her about this video and there was a subset of people who said that she used to be a final fantasy player now she plays genshin i hate her those people do exist in the game for its legitimate shortcomings so clearly things are changing hence me finally feeling comfortable to talk candidly about a game i used to love and genuinely want to see succeed Jesus. i'll be bringing up four main topics in this video However, I won't be discussing okay. the story since I'm a story skipper, so I don't have much to say on that. And it does seem to be one of the last remaining good parts of FF14. Oh. Topic 1. The formula is breaking down. For anyone that has played FF14 for longer than one expansion, we all know that this game operates on an extremely strict by-the-books formula with zero surprises. Every ex I think this has been an issue with a number of MMOs. I think this is an issue with World of Warcraft right now. It's an issue with Lost Ark. That the game is extremely formulaic. Everything happens the exact same way. And like, what the fuck? Destiny 2 as well. See, I don't play Destiny, so I'm not sure. But yeah, I think that like a, a lot of people are looking for... They're waiting for like, what is that next generation new game hook that's going to keep people engaged with an MMO? Because right now, nobody knows what it is. Expansion has three Savage Raid tiers, three Alliance Raids, two Trial Bosses at launch, uh -huh. and a new one every major patch, accompanied with a new dungeon. I mean, there isn't is this something I said about WoW? Like, I literally said this exact thing about WoW. Is that every expansion is so formulaic, I'm not as excited about them. Like, we've been effectively getting the same expansion ever since, like, I don't know, probably at least Legion, and you can argue since Mists of Pandaria. But I think really since Legion. Cataclysm was the first time that they really changed shit up a lot. But yeah, Legion was like, Legion, BFA, Shadowlands, Dragonflight, they're all basically the same. Zero room for going above and beyond. Just stick to what has always been delivered. Mm -hmm. And people are just simply getting tired of it. There is yep. definitely value in knowing what you'll be getting when you pay for an expansion. I mean, if any of you have been paying attention to Destiny 2, that game is a complete RNG loot box of what you'll get when you pay for an expansion. However, the downside to being extremely formulaic is you lose the ability to excite people. No longer am I sitting at the edge of my seat watching every live letter stream theorizing with my friends on what they'll announce next. 
I know what's coming. Another 24 man raid. One new dungeon, a new- I wonder how many people, f this is always a question that I've had, is like how many people feel this way because they're, this is their first time playing. Like for me, it was, all this stuff was new because I had never played it before. So like, is this something that's just an outcome of you playing the game for a long time and finally, you know, that kind of wearing off? Or is it something that's like intrinsic to the game? It's probably a bit of both. Trial boss. Another four bosses in the Savage tier. <gasps> Except actually the final boss of the Savage tier is two fights that are half finished to form a five boss raid tier. Pff, whoa, dude. What if they just made one fight that was fully complete? Okay, sorry. That's besides the point. I got a little off my rocker there. The point is veteran players that have been around for a few cycles of the 14 formula are just getting burnt out. And what's strange about this is Final Fantasy XIV has grown immensely. I mean, the yeah, popularity of, of this game has only gone up over time, which obviously- Well, I mean, to be fair, that's showing 2021, which was the highest viewership of the game, because that's whenever a lot of people moved over to start playing it. Let's look at it right now. Okay, so that, that's the way it is right now. Like, that's where he was showing. You, you see kind of what I'm saying, right? It's like, a, it's not indicative. Actually means way more- Nobody plays it on Steam. Steam isn't the correct amount. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go downstairs and uh, just contemplate what I just heard. Also, Chatter is right. Most people don't play Final Fantasy on Steam. It's cheaper to use the in-house launcher. Okay, well, um, go ahead and uh, if you have a high school diploma, if you have a college degree, uh, time to ask for a refund. You need a refund. You need to get it. You get that back. Yeah. Revenue, and yet, what's to show for it? In fact, some of you might not know this, but in Heaven's Word, we actually got two dungeons per patch. Oh, We've wow. steadily been getting less dungeons with every expansion <gasps> because you know what Square Enix does? What is Instead it? of investing the increased revenue to grow the game, cool. they only ever move development to different pieces of content, never increasing the overall amount of content. The mystical question everybody's had this expansion is, where is Endwalker's Eureka and Baja equivalent? I think that Final Fantasy has a philosophy, like that that team has a philosophy of not too much. And this is something that they did kind of with Final Fantasy 16. I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but I wish there was like more content in the game. Like more hunts to do, more different stuff to do. I think that like what they worry about is like overwhelming players. Over delivery? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's called Criterion Dungeons. No ish Guardian Restoration equivalent in Endwalker? Yes, there is. It's called Island Sanctuary. Less dungeons in Stormblood onwards? Well, that's to make way for ultimate raids. You see, despite mm -hmm. FF14 exploding in popularity and the cash shop overflowing with overpriced garbage to milk the player base, Square Enix has never- As I've wanted to say again, all cosmetics and all microtransactions are overpriced. There is no actual intrinsic value attached to any of them. They all have perceived value that is invented by the developer. There is no actual reason why these things cost the prices that they do. They are simply decided on by the developer. Never added content to the game, only replaced content. Same with every and game. this formula is just getting stale. Do I really want to spend $15 a month just to do another 24-man raid that is exactly like the ones that came before it. Topic two, repetition breeds apathy. Beyond- Um, and, and I think this is kind of true is like, and, and like in general, I feel like there's a lot of people that feel this way about a lot of games. Like, cause obviously I'm not like playing Final Fantasy super currently. And I, I didn't finish the, uh, the, the end game content. So like, I never really hit this wall with Final Fantasy. But I know that, like, for WoW and for Lost Ark and for, uh, I would say maybe a little bit of New World, too, MMOs have a really big problem about feeling kind of samey. Where it's like, oh, this is the same as what we've had before. This is, oh, it's the same stuff as before. It's the same as before. And people just kind of feel like it's repetitive in general. And that's the way I felt about Diablo 3, for example. 
That's why I stopped playing it because like every season I was doing the exact same stuff. Like I'm just okay. I'm just playing the same game again. Well, what the fuck? Uh, that's what an MMO is, though. Classic's not like that. Classic WoW isn't like that. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're right. It is. But like you, it takes a lot longer to get through it all. Just sticking to the formula for content releases, FF14 has also lost all creativity when it comes to encounter design, which was arguably FF14's greatest strength outside of the story for years. In fact, one of my most popular videos on this Ooh. channel is me selling the game to WoW players on how I great the boss this. encounters are. But again, for those of us that have been around for a while, we have started to see the- I don't get that take. Wait, what? Wait, what's the, uh, that's kind of a bad take. What's wrong? This guy's takes are bad. Encounter design is better than ever. Let me let me go back and make sure I, I listen because like people found this very problematic what he said. Repetition four man raid that is exact Beyond just sticking to the formula for content releases, FF14 has also lost all creativity when it comes to encounter design, which was arguably FF14's greatest strength outside of the story for years. In fact, one of my most okay, popular so the fights aren't creative. Okay, why? videos on this channel is me selling the game to WoW players on how great the boss encounters are. What? But again, for those of us that have been around for a while, we have started to see the utter lack of innovation when it comes to boss design, mm -hmm. even in the ultimate fights. Every mechanic is just a random combination of group stacks, prey markers, tether grabbing, limit cut, tower soaking, or god forbid clock spots. I mean, it's all been done before! There is no interesting new mechanics that challenge your gameplay ability. If you're a veteran player or no one, tell me if this sounds familiar to you. Oh, this mechanic is like this other mechanic in that other boss. Every boss is just a reskin of mechanics used in previous fights over and over. All you have to do when learning a new Final Fantasy XIV boss is find the safe spot because do you know what every FF14 mechanic in existence is? Stand and let thing resolve. Seriously, when I had this realization is when I lost- I think there's a lot of mechanics in Final Fantasy that are the exact same as in WoW. Like, there is, and um... Subjectively wrong is someone who clears Savage and Ultimates is better than ever now? Yeah, it's like, for example, um... Like, let's see what the next mechanic is. All interest in FF14 in encounter design. Stand and let thing resolve. That is every okay, so mechanic. Kill an there is no innovation to the- Okay, that's Raw Den. Raw Den has this exact same mechanic. There are two different mobs that spawn on opposite sides of the room, and you have to decide which one you're going to kill. And based off of the one that you kill, it's going to do different things. Gameplay. Just simply a new twist on stand and let thing and resolve. Yep. Where other MMOs have moving platforms that require careful jumping, boss attacks that- Um, moving platforms that require careful jumping. So that's actually one of the things I really liked about Wayfinder, is that Wayfinder implemented and integrated uh, actual platforming into its boss fights. Like that one fight that I did where you had to like move against like the squares or like Andross and like the original Star Fox. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I, I like that. And also I've said many times, right? Vaulton is one of the greatest. It is the best ARPG isometric fight that I have ever played and nothing even comes remotely close. It is amazing. It's, it's actually disgusting how good it is can be countered which dynamically changes the fight every pull or using but the thing is though is like with 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 lost ark there are the same problems though this the same problems are like there's you know x3 plus one there are the soak transitions there is the counter thing yeah lost ark has the same issue it's just a different list of complaints like, for example, like, you don't really stack up a lot for, like, big AoEs. Like, you do every once in a while in Lost Ark. Like, for example, like, after the Vicus typing test, after I fail it, everybody would usually stack up for, like, a Gunlance or Shield or something like that. Sure. But for the most part, uh, you don't really do a lot of stacking. But otherwise, there are a number of things where you behave totally differently because the game is functioning differently. But inside of that game, there is a lot of sameness height and gravity yeah, Velgano's pizzas how many bosses have a Velgano's pizza now um I know that Vicus has Velgano's pizza what other bosses have that uh Burrell gate six clown clown has Velgano's pizza
Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I now I remember because we usually um we usually sidereal that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying, right? Is like Lost Ark has the same problem. To create fun moments, all FF14 has is And also, by the way, stand and let thing resolve. I have to tell you that if you compare that to Maiden of Vigilance in Tomb of Sargeras, there is a lot of also stand and let thing resolve. And the soak there is the exact same thing. And uh, the slam here is you just stand there and let it resolve. It's the exact same mechanic. Now, I do think that World of Warcraft in general does verticality better than Final Fantasy. Uh, in terms of like the fights, like for example, like you go down here and it knocks your character up. I think that's really cool, or at least from what I've seen. But overall, I think it's just like Blau has different problems. Moment, all FF14 has is stand and let thing resolve. See, that's like standing inside of it and then having the damage. You can see, obviously, the damage is split, I believe, with all the people that are like in that group. And so they're like soaking it together. Uh, so there's a number of bosses that work like that. They're actually, the, the term is, well, Saber Lash is usually referred to as a tank soak that only tanks soak. But like something like this, there's plenty of bosses that do that. Like Ultraxion does that. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, Major Domo Staghelm does that in Firelands. There's many bosses that do a mechanic that's exactly like this. Grab Media the tether yeah. and let it resolve. Go to clock... Blood Queen Lanithel in uh, ICC. Spots and let it resolve. Hide behind the rock and let it resolve. There's a lot of those in WoW too. Saffron. And this repetition of reusing old mechanics over and over on top of a non-changing gameplay formula leads to apathy. No longer are we challenged and asked to improve our gameplay ability. We are simply tasked with finding the safe spot and standing there until the thing resolves. And challenge in FF14 has actually been going backwards. The game is not even maintaining the difficulty it used to have, but actually making everything easier and easier. Topic. I, I mean, I don't know about this because, like, I mean, it's it's kind of hard to say because isn't uh, isn't the Omega Protocol, which is the most recent raid that they did, the ultimate, isn't it the hardest one they've ever done? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I heard a lot of people saying, like, it broke their, their guild, like, they quit the game over it. It was so bad. The Savage Tier 2, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily true. Pick 3. It wasn't always like this. Uh -oh. I understand that I might be coming across as a bitter old man yelling at kids for having fun. I'm only 24, by the way. But trust me, I absolutely despise nostalgia lords who blindly think everything was better in the past. However... We can empirically say that Final Fantasy has only gotten easier with every expansion. Class design has completely stagnated and lacks any growth at all. I mean, it blew my mind that an actual popular opinion these days is to make combo skills just one button that you spam over and over. Yeah, great idea, geniuses. You know, what if we just made every class have one ability called the I win button? Maybe then you could convince yourself you're a good player. Preach. I don't think that being a good player matters. I think that having fun matters. I don't think that it makes you a good player. It doesn't... Like, the ability to memorize a rotation, I feel like is a pretty low-tier skill indicator, personally. Uh, I think a better skill indicator is being able to, like, actually adapt and improvise what your rotation is based off of what's happening at the current time. Uh, I don't really think that you need to have these super complex rotations. And also, making a game harder doesn't make it better. Whenever people make something easier, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a downgrade from what it was before. There have been a lot of cases where, like in WoW, for example, there have been things that were made easier and like complications and annoyances that were just removed. And I think that it was an overall improvement of the game. Lost Ark has eight skills, yes. It's not fun, though. What I'm saying is that it not being fun is not an outcome of the amount of buttons. It's an outcome of the impact and the meaning of the buttons. For example, I think that World of Warcraft Classic and Wrath of the Lich King, to a lesser extent, playing a class is more fun at that time than it is in Retail WoW. Even though Retail is way more complicated. 
even though retail is way more involved. I have more fun playing the game in like Classic or in Wrath. So this is what I'm saying, right? Is that uh, it, it doesn't really matter to me like how hard something is. I think people always get this fixation on, oh, this content is so hard. Who cares if it's hard? It's about if it's fun. Gaming used to have a philosophy on class design he called Moments of Glory, where classes were not meant to be jacks of all trades, but instead have moments in encounters where their specific class had an area to really shine and do something special. Yeah. Where are modern day FF's Moments of Glory? Pressing Felcleave five times in a row? Yeah, that's real interesting and unique. The well, I think that the reason why they don't have the moments of glory are because th this is a very double-edged sword. And it's one of the things where, like, whenever you ask for this, whenever people want this, then it's like, oh, that's great. Like, they're, they're like, okay, yeah, this is what I want. And then whenever they get it, they're mad about it. I think a really good example of this is, like, Gateway. Uh, like Warlock's Gateway. Like a lot of people are annoyed that only Warlocks can make gateways. Uh, people were really annoyed that only Warriors had Rallying Cry. People were very annoyed that certain classes had these indispensable buffs that everybody had to have in order to use them. Uh, like Augmentation Evokers are a good example of that now for, for World of Warcraft. And this is, I haven't really played a lot with them. So I'm, I'm speaking from like secondhand experience from what I've heard. I could be a little bit wrong about this. But what my understanding is that everybody feels like they need them because they have this functionality that's indispensable. And I, I, I think that the problem is like, it, it's a grass is always greener on the other side situation where whenever you have games that have moment of glory classes, then you have people saying that like, oh, well, it feels really bad to not have this. Like, for example, imagine doing Nefarian when you didn't have mages. So you couldn't AOE down the ads that spawn at 20%. That would be really bad, right? But having the mages, it feels really good. And that's the difference. But they changed that. And so now everybody has an AOE. Everybody has these tools. Because the reason why is that people didn't like it. Now, my opinion is that I think people do like it. And I think that it does make the game better. And I think that they should continue doing it. I think Classic WoW is an indicator of that. However, let's not pretend that these moments of glory were not removed by the request of the players. The players wanted these removed. The only class that can even have a moment of glory is Black Mage which is coincidentally the class that the game director Yoshi P plays, in which they can save up instant casts and procs to do an entire phase of an ultimate fight without ever needing to hard cast a single spell. Now that's really cool! Try and find any other moment of glory on any other class. They don't exist. Bosses that well, used to also, like this is kind of, it's not congruent with like the point that it makes fights easy, that fights are getting easier. Because whenever you have classes that have moments of glory, what you do is you enable fights to be very easy. Because that's what the glory is attached to, right? Because you don't want to make the you don't want to make it mandatory, right? Because you make it mandatory, well then it's like, okay, well now now it's like it's no longer a moment of glory, it's just a requirement. But like what happens is that if you have certain classes for certain bosses, it just makes the boss like a thousand times easier. I'll give you one example. Halfus Wormbreaker in Bastion of Twilight. This came out uh, in the first tier of Cataclysm. And at the time, priests did healing based off of the damage they dealt. So as soon as a priest did damage to a target, then that damage will then be applied to the lowest health uh, person around them. But because Halfus took extra damage, it made priests way better. So if you had two priests healing on that fight, the fight was a joke. It just completely invalidated the fight. It didn't matter at all. Also, another good example of this is um, the reason why pets take a lot of extra damage from boss melee attacks is actually because of Firelands. 
And what people used to do in Firelands is they used to fight Major Domo Staghelm, who was the second to last boss in Firelands, and they had a pet tank it because the AoE like radial cleave that he would do would have a 90% reduction on a pet and it would never actually do enough damage to kill the pet. So everybody would literally just have a pet tank the boss and then just slowly DPS the boss down and then the boss died. That's why bosses do way more damage to pets now. It's because of Firelands. So the problem with having these things that are moments of glory is that they allow you to trivialize fights because that is the moment of glory. The fact that now I can trivialize this mechanic because of my utility or my skill at using my class. So I actually am on the side of give classes those moments of authority or uh, not authority, um, moments of glory, give them the ability to trivialize fights and just make the game fun and make it rewarding and make it feel good. Fuck everything else. That's my perspective. But, you, but you're not going to make a game hard that way. Isn't Limit Break and Sidereal Gauge something as a moment of glory for the party? It is, but it's not, because usually it's min-maxed. Like, for example, um, how many people use the Sidereal in Valton for the first transition? You know, they use Balthor on, on Valton first begin. So, like, everybody uses it, right? And then maybe they use Balthor again at the end whenever he's doing the uh, all the attacks at the end, right? Everybody does this. So it's like, let me break. Yeah, it becomes just simply a tool that fits in a hole. Require planned movement, careful positioning, Could and a consideration for your melee DPS's well, positional that. skills have devolved like into like bosses with hitboxes as big as the arena or the godforsaken yeah. wall boss, where boss movement is literally impossible. You know, I might as well just be punching the air with how little the actual enemy I'm fighting matters in an encounter. Raid buff abilities that used to have varying cooldown lengths requiring planned and coordinated burst timing to maximize damage on an encounter have devolved into every buff still either having a 60 second or 120 second cooldown completely removing the planning of burst windows and there's still so much more and i i can guarantee you that people probably asked for that didn't they yeah i bet they did yeah this is the same thing that happened with wow and also like ha stacking cooldowns is kind of a problem because like so here's the problem with stacking cooldowns is that and this is something that happened in legion uh is let's say you're doing 100 percent damage and then plus 20 percent right and then plus uh 50 percent and then plus uh let's say another 30 percent actually 30 percent is kind of hard to add let's do another 50 percent okay so these are multiplicative so this is 120 and then 50 percent of 120 is not a 50 percent more it's 60 percent more so now we're up to 170 right or sorry 60 no 180 right and now we have over here uh, 50% of 180 is 90, so now we have 270%. So you see what I'm saying? So you have 270% damage, and what ends up happening is that if you have a character that can do 270% damage, this means that outside of that burst window, in order for the class to be balanced, they can only be actually doing about 30% damage. So how many of you guys back in Legion, for example felt like you were just limp dicking a boss until all your cooldowns came up because that's the way i felt i was just limp dicking a boss until the cooldowns came up then i did all my damage and then i waited for my cooldowns to come up and that's why it got changed the complete irrelevance of enmity and removal of tank stances healers being completely gutted into only having two damage skills dps classes having unique and interesting targeted utility skills like mana shift and palisade deleted from the game Conal AoEs that used to require dynamic movement and aiming to hit the most amount of enemies homogenized into every AoE attack being a circle around your character so you can't possibly miss an attack. I mean, I could go on forever! Cross-class abilities that used to incentivize trying other jobs by leveling them up to borrow a skill for your main job are now just auto-unlock role abilities, attribute points- Yeah, because people complained about it, they didn't like it. And this is like, I, I think this is the point, right, is that a lot of people don't like this kind of stuff. They don't want to have to level up another job in order to uh, in order to play their main character because uh, it was bad. Yeah, like for example, uh, like with New World, uh, a lot of people didn't like the idea that they had to farm out PvP for the Great Sword artifact weapon. 
I was one of them. Now, I'm a pretty serious player, so I just did it, and it is what it is, and I have it now. But there's a lot of people out there that they see that, and they say, fuck that, I don't want to do it. It sucks, yeah. Pe that's why, for example, Arena Gear got nerfed in Wrath. Arena Gear was, like, on par with, like, Raid Gear and Burning Crusade, but then they nerfed it because people all said they had to do Arena. It added another layer of growth while leveling your character by giving you extra stats are gone. I mean, Jesus Christ, every expansion is just another round of wait and see what they delete this time. Ugh. Misshapen Chair made a video going in-depth about how the dumbing down of class design is removing interest for veteran players, and I want to say that these changes don't help new players either. The greatest strength a game can have is being a game that is easy to learn but difficult to master. What happens when the game is easy to learn and easy to master? You know, as veteran players, we often have to huff copium by saying that... Well, I don't... I, I think that this person places too much value and too much importance on the hardcore, competitive, difficult aspect of the game. I, I, I feel like there is... So, like, whenever I, I think about a game, right? Um... Like, this is the game. This is the entire game. And, like, this is the competitive aspect of the game. It's there. It matters. But it's not as big as you'd believe. That looks like a nipple. Let's change that. Well, the game isn't made for us. It's made for new players, and us veterans are just marketing tools to get new players to try the game. But that doesn't last forever. There isn't an infinite pool of new players you can constantly bring in. Eventually, those new players become veteran players too, and they will realize all the problems with the game and end up logging out for the last time. What happened? I think that a lot of people, you're never going to actually get them to start raiding or to start playing competitive content. Like, World of Warcraft is never going to get the average player into a mythic raid. It doesn't matter, like, the, how enticing they make it or whatever. It's just not going to happen because people don't want to do that kind of content. Uh, and, and, like, that shouldn't really be your goal. And also, like, it's like no game, like, lasts forever. Especially, like, these live service games. It's very hard to make them last for a long time when there is no more new players. Mm -hmm. Topic four, who is this game made for? Every simplification, every deletion of a system, every mm -hmm. dumbing down of an interesting mechanic has always been seen as making the game more approachable. My question is with this never ending crusade of making the game easier and easier without ever expanding the available content or adding on to the existing gameplay formula, what is the end goal for Final Fantasy XIV? Everything I loved about the game has either been removed or dumbed down to the point of being menial. As someone who got into the game for the unique class design and amazing raid encounters, I've had to sit and watch as all the interest in class design was slowly whittled away making every class dull and homogenized. I've had to sit and watch as all the creativity in raid design slowly evaporated into a mishmash of reusing the exact same mechanics for years on end. And if the trend continues, at some point, your favorite features will end up being dumbed down or deleted. So what is the end goal here? Who is the game made for? Cat moms who play one hour a month and spend- uh, Well, yeah, kind of. Right? I mean, that's probably it. Yep, yeah, there we go. And I think, again, Final Fantasy is not a game that's built around hardcore players. And I think that the reason why Final Fantasy got so popular in 2021 and why it had been growing in popularity ever since Stormblood and you could say even Heavensward is because Final Fantasy... So let's say um, we're going to do another... We have three Microsoft Paint drawings just for one video, if you can believe that. So this is the skill level of all players, right? These are the most skilled um over actually over here and this is the least skilled final fantasy does a very good job at attracting mid-core players like yes obviously you have people like the ultimates are there and they exist but world of warcraft is very much centered around extremely hardcore players it's very much centered around people that raid mythic plus or do mythic plus and raid mythic and uh, they do, like, a arena at a high level, and they get good gear for it. Whereas, like, Final Fantasy XIV 
is very much the reason why it's successful is that it appeals to that general audience. It appeals to that general audience who find the enjoyment in the simplicity of a nightclub in a video game to be refreshing and relaxing and nice rather than people that are trying to, you know, play the game one hour a day versus play the game, uh, you know, 12 hours a day. It is absolutely meant for those uh, those mid-core players. And those are the ones, I think, that really left WoW and went to Final Fantasy permanently. It's the mid-core players that feel like WoW just doesn't really give them any sense of satisfaction. And I think that Classic WoW was an incredible game for mid-core players. Because while it required a tremendous amount of dedication, it required actually very minimal level of skill. So you could be kind of shitty at the game, but as long as you played it a lot and you knew what you were doing, you could still keep up. And that's why Classic WoW was so good. It was good because it didn't reward people for being, you know, CSGO, you know, level of, of reaction time. It didn't reward people for, you know, just showing up once a week and then just, you know, turning in a daily quest and getting a level a week. You had to actually earn it. And that's it. DPS is also easy to play. Yes, it is easy to play. So I think Final Fantasy is absolutely designed for that mid-core audience. This is a bell curve? It is. And this is why Final Fantasy... This is the problem, right? Is that the, the bell curve is like this. Most players are in here. They want to play the game regularly. They want to take it more seriously, but they don't want to do mythic raids. They don't want to do mythic plus 20s. They just want to do something that's kind of challenging with their friends. But with your logic, shouldn't Final Fantasy have more players than WoW? I don't know if it does or not. I have no idea. Like, I, I have no clue. I, I think it probably doesn't. Yeah, I, I think that WoW is a lot bigger than Final Fantasy. I think there's a lot of reasons, by the way, why WoW still has more players. It's it, This is only one metric. There are a lot of other metrics and reasons. It's just a factor. That entire time crying because the pixels on the screen said a sad word? Leveling roulette mains who spend the entire expansion leveling classes that they will have no use for at max level? Roleplay mains who don't even do any content at all and spend their sub money dancing at player made clubs? Look, I'm not trying- Yeah. Because the truth is that these guys are having more fun playing the game than you are. Unironically, the best server to play on is Moonguard. Moonguard feels more like World of Warcraft than any other server. Straight up. So yeah, they're having more fun playing the game. You're wrong about this? Well, here's another reason why I'm right. Is because with the nightclubs in these type of social environments, they are much more resistant to content droughts. So, for example, if the new raid takes longer to come out, it doesn't really matter because people are already caught up doing their own events and their own content that's external of the game's release structure. Aid clubs? Look, I'm not trying to shit on those kinds of people. But if that's who the game is targeting, then why even bother making high-end raids? Why even bother adding new classes to the game? Well, why, why, why even bother doing anything if there are some people that aren't going to do it? It's like going to a restaurant and saying, why even bother having anything else on the menu except for what I like to eat? Well, it's because there are some people that like that. That's why they have ultimates. Now, are ultimates, like, for example, ultimate raids are basically like um like i mean hard mode brel shaza is really fucking hard right like it, it's insanely hard uh Thaymine is fucking ridiculous it's insanely difficult and guess what uh lost ark is built around that lost ark the primary focus in lost ark is challenging group pve content that is what most people do in that game. It is not that much of a social game. It is not that much of a sandbox game. It is a raid simulator. That's what it does. And that's great because that's what the game's made for. But there are new islands that come out that are casual islands. There's the, oh, it's Mokoko Island and you get the Mokoko hammer and you kill the, uh, the... I don't know, the rabbit with the hammer, and it's a golden rabbit, it explodes, you get 10 gold, oh my god, right? And like, these are all nice. So, there are things that are added, like for example, like, 
Wendy's add salads every once in a while. I remember they made the Asiago chicken salad. And I was like, why would you do this? Didn't Don't you know that I'm the only person that goes to Wendy's? I'm never going to eat this. Why would you make this salad if I don't want it? Well, it's because I go there with my dad and then he gets it instead. A successful MMO is an MMO that knows exactly what it is and it caters to a handful of groups of people without trying to make the entire game for everybody. I think that's what Wrath did. Why even bother with anything but the MSQ? The point I'm trying to make is that on I'm top of catering to the cat moms of leveling roulette mains and RP enjoyers, the game used to cater to everyone. It used to cater to the high-end raid enjoyers who wanted in-depth class design to master and theorize how to maximize on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. It used to cater to the mid-core semi-invested players who wanted a goal to chase with relic weapons. It used to cater to people who actually wanted a game to get invested in and master. On top of the new players, the casuals, and Twitter spamming Graha Tia Sims. But it's not that way anymore. And I just don't know who the target audience is for this game. I don't know if Square Enix just wants you to simply play the patch by coming back once every four months to complete all the new content in four hours and go, oh, that was cool, I guess. And well, then that is kind of what they said to do, to be fair. But um, who is the game for? I feel like I don't know, man. Am I crazy that whenever I see a UI bar that is three by, what is this? Three by 12, that's 36 buttons on the screen. With like, how many buffs does he have up right now? What is this? This is like, he's got over 10 buffs up. And some of these buffs matter a lot. Like for example, like this is a, this is a shield wall or not a shield wall, it's a 20% damage reduction. And, and I think this is also, uh, this is like his damage cooldown as well. And then the boss also has a debuff on it. This is this here. It reduces its damage done. So there are, yeah, Rampart. That's the, uh, that's this one here. And uh, I feel like this is extremely complex. Log out for four more months. It doesn't seem that way with how slow the gearing up process takes or the hooks they so have to keep you resubbing okay. with things like the auto demolition timer for housing where you can't take a break longer than 45 days. But if they want us to continue playing week after week, paying our monthly $15 entry fee, then why are they removing all of the interest and challenge for players who do spend a large amount of time playing the game? I don't subscribe to the idea that making every- well, I don't think that, uh, I mean, like, I don't know. I feel like they didn't, I mean, yeah, they added like two ultimate fights, right? They added the, um, uh, the Dragon Song reprise or whatever. And then they added the Omega Protocol. Like they added two ultimate fights. I mean- like, it would be probably nice if they added some mid-core, like, I don't know, something like they said, like, Bajja was kind of like that. I don't really, I never played it. I'm not sure. But, like, yeah, it would be good if they had added that. I don't know why they didn't. But otherwise, yeah. They should have a Bajja, though? Yeah, sure. Everything easier and simpler ends up keeping new players invested for longer. In fact, I think it's the opposite. I think expanding the available content, keeping a high skill ceiling for players to master, and constantly creating unique encounters to genuinely challenge your gameplay ability gives players a reason to play the game more than the required 4 hours a patch. I used to think that all the simplification to class design would mean players would have an easier time getting better at the game so they could tackle harder content, but as I'm sure all of you know, even in FF's easiest state of all time, people in roulettes are still terrible at their classes. People in party finder groups are still floor- I don't know why he's upset about this, bro. Haven't you seen the classic WoW fucking compilations? They've got three buttons and they hit the wrong one. And this game came out 20 years ago. They still can't figure it out. Cause they're stupid, that's why magnets that do one dps and again i'm not trying to shit on these people my point is that if someone doesn't have an interest in taking that step into the world of playing well and learning to optimize then they just won't yeah they no won't. amount exactly. of simplification homogenization and dumbing down or deletion of systems is going to make johnny two fingers become a good player it i actually think this is a very good point that he's making i think he's right about this 
what he's saying here is that you can't just make the game easier and then expect people that aren't mythic raiders to start raiding mythic because it's a total mentality change it's like a completely different idea it's like, oh, well, maybe if we make the lettuce the same color as a steak, people that like eating steaks will eat salads. Probably not. It's just a completely different... Everything about it is massively different. So, yeah, and this is what WoW did. Is WoW saw people... Not enough people were doing raids, so they tried to make the raids easier. They were like, oh, well, there's LFR. There's, like, an easier version of it, etc. And, like, there are just some people that aren't interested or compelled to do that kind of content. And if they want to, they'll do it. Just makes the game less interesting and fun for those of us who want to spend a little more time on the game and get a little more invested. And this is the crux of everything I've said. Like, I, and, and I got a lot of criticism for uh, actually supporting the wad prune of abilities. Like, I'll say this again. Razor as a company has their, like, I think one of the biggest reasons why Razor is as big as it is now is because Mists of Pandaria was so fucking complicated. There was so much shit in that game that you had to buy a Razor Naga in order to play Arena. It was fucking insane. There was, like, how many buttons and, and fucking different types of, oh, like, shift modifiers, control modifiers. It's nuts. How many of you guys bought an MMO mouse around Mists of Pandaria? Feel like yeah, me, 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 me. There's a lot of fucking people. There you go. That's too much. Too many buttons. Not probably not according to Razor. Razor probably thought it was great. However, um, you know, it's too many buttons for for average player. And I've said before, I think Mists of Pandaria was actually bad for class design because everybody had everything, and there were three of them. It was massively bloated. There was too much of everything. And I think Legion was a thousand times better for every single class. Legion played so much better than Mists of Pandaria. And it had less buttons. Mop was homogenization. Yes. Class design in, in, in Cataclysm and Mists of Pandaria. Blizzard's idea of class design in those two expansions were giving the classes that don't have a button a button from another class. That's all they did. I said the best classes, in my opinion, classes are way more fun, especially in PvP. They were, well, what I'm saying is, like, they were only fun for people that are sitting here reminiscing on a video game that came out 10 years ago. And what I mean by that is that they were only fun for people that were hyper-invested in the game. Yeah, it was fun for super try-hard players, but not for an average person. The path Final Fantasy XIV has been going down does not tangibly improve the game for new players because eventually they too will become veterans and reach a point where there is no more challenge or interest in the game for them. This game that I gave 12,000 hours no, of- No, no, th there's never gonna be a point. Like all you have to do is present the option and the people that want to will take it and the people that don't want to will just simply not take it. They're never going to take it. You're not going to uh, convince them to take it. They're not going to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to just start raiding Mythic now. It's not going to happen. Of my life too, and six years of enjoyment has taken away everything I once enjoyed about it. I just want the game I once loved to be good again. It has been in the past, and I desperately hope it will be in the future. Thanks for watching. I wonder how he would feel about You're this if he started playing the Hello, game everyone. today, for example. Because I always wonder whenever I hear comments like this, how much of your feelings about this are an outcome of the actual state of the game versus how much of them are an outcome of you playing the game for a long time and having a different opinion about, about it. But I do think that it's an issue. It's like an existential problem for a lot of MMOs that they have a content delivery method that players kind of lose interest in. And I think MMOs thrive on kind of having that it factor, that now factor, that, you know, sense of excitement of not knowing what to expect, like what's going to happen. And as soon as they become formulaic, I think that a lot of people do lose interest in them. And it's a problem that I think Lost Ark, Final Fantasy, and WoW are all three running into. And I think people said in chat, Destiny 2 has this issue as well. 
So it's very hard to know how to solve this. I think this is something that, like, the MMO that solves this problem will be the next big MMO. Because nobody knows what it is. Final Fantasy uh, classes are super formulaic and homogenized? Well, I don't know yet. I think that one of the only good points that he brought up here, actually not one of the only, like, I mean, it's his opinion, right? It's whatever. But I think one of the main points that he brought up that I think was very good is that he said that you're not going to just make a game easier and make things simpler and convince casual players to start being hardcore players. They are just simply two fundamentally different groups of people. It's like, it doesn't matter how long you put a dog in the water, it's never going to turn into a fish. It's just never going to happen. There's a video right there. I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? Yeah, a couple million. Yeah, do it for a couple million years and then maybe it would work.